Right, assuming it's running. Right, so the first thing we've got to do, you make sure you've got your project. You don't need to have it ho open for this to work. Um, but And it doesn't break if you've got it open, so that's that's good. But obviously don't try and like edit it while the document is running, because that won't work. Right, the documentation program is called Doxygen. Now, it might be on the start menu. I've installed it. I don't know whether it will be. It's on every machine. But if you just do a search for Doxygen, and it'll come up. Okay, and you want the Doxy Wizard. There are a couple of things you need to be careful of. This is a documenter. It produces loads of files. So in order for it to work efficiently, what it does is the folders that you select where you want it to create output and where you want it to like use as a scratch area, it will destroy the contents. All right. In the past, students have selected their project folder as the location they want a documentation to be produced and it deleted everything. All right. The worst case scenario we've ever had is when somebody did that and then we found out the backup system hadn't been running for three months. <laughs> Whoops. Luckily, they printed their code out so they could at least type their code in again. And then I managed to make a project out of it. But we don't want to do that. So all the output folders, you're going to dump on the D drive. All right. And then we know we're not going to hurt anything on our home drives. So the first thing you've got to select is its scratch area. So just make sure you've got your D drive up. Make yourself a new folder. Doesn't matter what you call it. It's not going to have anything important in it. So make sure that's selected. It won't let you run the system if you haven't selected all the output folders. Now, I'm not going to put anything in here, but you can put a title for the project if you've actually got a name for these things. I know some people are still thinking about names. All right. You can mess about and have a logo for it, which it plasters on all the pages it produces. I've not messed with that, so you could play with that to find out. Um, the more important things is selecting where your code is. So your source code, you need to locate your folder. Now this one I have got is March 2015 template, and we need to find the code folder. That's all we need to point to. So as soon as you've got that, say select. Okay. You don't need to tick that scan recursively thing. But we do need to say where we're going to build it. So for the destination folder, again, for some reason it dumps itself back on the C drive every time. Don't know why. But I'm just going to go on the D drive, make a folder. Don't matter what it's called. As long as you're going to be able to find it again. Okay. Right. We're just going to run through the wizard bit, but there's one bit we've got to do on the expert. So we just go on next, <coughs> and that brings up what mode we're looking for. Well, we're doing C sharp, so we need to select the option for C sharp. Okay. Then we can do next again. We don't need to change anything on that. There are other things that it can produce, different output formats. And then just looking at the last one, it'll build a little diagram to show, you know when you've gone and put um, player colon sprite, you're, what you're doing is you're inheriting from my sprite object because you're making a better sprite. And it'll build little diagrams at the top of each page to show what the inheritance is. It's quite nice. Okay, so that's the basic settings done. So the only ones you really need to change were mode and the project page ones. You then need to flick on expert and we go on to build. Now we, in our methods and our fields, we've got public, private, static. Some of them come up as internal. You know, these are built, these were decided for us when we, right clicked and said create all right so it picked the more appropriate ones by default it'll only pick up public stuff so we just need to make sure we tick on extract private static and i think there's an internal one an internal i think that's the only three we need to set okay and they go red to say that these aren't the default things that should be enough for us to now run it. So all we've got to do is select the run tab and just say run doxygen. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> That's it, it's finished. Okay. Now you've saved that in a particular folder, but this will automatically go and show you the index file for it. Now it uses ActiveX. <coughs> 
which we by default block. So you'll, whenever you want to view this, you'll always have to say allow block content. All right. I can't remember whether it works in Chrome properly because we block things in Chrome as well. So you get this and there's nothing on there. But if you look at the classes, it should list every one of your classes. Okay, so uh, what have I got on here? Credits. Now, that's what it produces, and this is what you're going to print out for each one of your classes. So it lists at the top just some basics about it, but all this information is coming from the comments. Okay, so it's listed public subroutines, private subroutines. Detailed description is the thing that's on top of the class, that comment. And then what it does is it goes and goes into more detail talking about parameters. So these are the parambits that are above your subroutines. Okay, so if I go back to the class list, so the high score entry was the one that I documented. See, there's the little jazzy diagram it's made for me. You can see that when it lists things, if there's no XML comment, there is no stuff mentioned. So here, look, that's not got anything. They're actually in black to say, oh, there isn't anything there. The ones that have had it's picked up comments for are in blue. Okay, so that it's actually listing the private attributes. It's actually quite nice the way it lays it all out. So it separates them all up for you. Okay, detailed description. Again, I didn't really put much of a detailed description. <coughs> but for each one of the methods, it then does that. Let's zoom that in a little bit. Okay, so you get any parameters that you described, if you haven't commented one, you'll see that there isn't a box. Okay, for that description. But that's all you've got to do. But obviously, if you haven't done all your comments, so this one obviously hasn't got any comments. So these are the main class ones again. So you can see quickly which ones you haven't done the classes for. But if I look at the GM one, I think I probably did put comments in all of those. Oh, look, I didn't for those. So they come up in black bold. So the ones that you've missed, black bold, that's what you're looking for. So all of those need XML comments. For whatever reason, Throttle's got it. Those textures haven't got comments. And so on. So you're looking for... And all we're going to do is print this out. Okay, let me print preview this, see if it works. We've had a lot of problems. Oh, it has done multi-pages. Alright, so it's a nice format for printing out, which is a bit better than the old system we used to use. Okay, so we should just be able to go bang, print. I don't know where the logo appears, but it's, like I say, if you want to play with that, so that you can... Um, let's get rid of that. Go away. I'm assuming it'll appear at the top somewhere. I don't know whether there's any space for it. Maybe, yeah, I think it goes up here. So if we just quickly go back to Doxid, if I put that on that side of the page and... Yeah, so the My Project bit is there. I don't know where Project Synopsis goes. Again, you can play with that and see where that goes. That's just some NAF thing you can put. You can put version 1 or whatever. Or like I do on the game engine, and make like loads of different numbers up. And put like version 1.296432. 6D or something like that. Okay. Um, <coughs> and that's it. That's Doxygen. Quite a nice little program. It works with lots of different languages as well. So, And it's free. If anyone wants to download it, it's quite nice. Okay. I'll upload that to YouTube.